In this video, I'm going to talk about the kinetics of polyesterification for uncatalyzed reactions. This, this is the experimentally determined rate law for uncatalyzed polyesterification, and we're going to take a quick look at where that comes from. Okay, so if we have a diacid reacting with a diol to make a polyester, right, that acid reacts with the alcohol forming the ester group and we might suspect that it's the rate law is going to depend on the concentration of acid and the concentration of alcohol but that's actually incorrect experimentally it's been shown that it depend it's a third order not a second order rate law and it depends on the concentration of acid squared concentration of acid squared and concentration of of alcohol. So we're going to talk about these concentrations in more detail, um, but it's really important that even though this, if we look at the reaction and this seems very logical, you always have to experimentally verify, experimentally determine these rate laws. And so in this class, you will always be given an experimentally determined, validated rate law. That's not something we will be doing in this class. You'll always be given the rate law for both step growth and chain growth polymerizations. Okay, so here's the rate law we've been given. So the rate of polyesterification, the rate of polymerization, we can measure it as the, the rate of decrease of the acid groups with respect to time, because as we're consuming the acid, we're making the polyester. Okay, now it's very important to realize that this the brackets always mean concentration, but the concentration of A is the concentration of acid groups, not the concentration of monomers, and B, the concentration of alcohol groups, it, that's what it is. It's not the concentration of monomers. So if we look at the reaction I have drawn here, and let's say that the concentration of acid, the concentration of the diacid, so the concentration of this monomer equals the concentration of this monomer, the diol, which is one molar. Well, the concentration of this is one molar, there's two acids. Therefore, the concentration of acid groups is two molar. Okay? So, again, our concentration of diacid and diol in this example is one molar, one mole per liter. And the concentration of acid and the concentration of alcohol is two molar because in this example, there's two per monomer, okay? So each diacid and each diol has two functional groups, two acids or two alcohols. Okay, so understanding this is really important for success of these problems, but the next step is the key step. Okay, so again, here's our rate law. And I know that the concentration of acid changes with time, and I know the concentration of alcohol changes with time. So with this rate law, I can't separate the variables and integrate this unless I remember that the concentration of acid equals the concentration of alcohol. And every time I use one acid, I'm using one alcohol. So not only are these equal to get high molecular weight polymer, they're equal through all time because every time I use an A, I use a B. So this is the key step. We have to set these equal and we can we can do everything in terms of A or everything in terms of B but if I, I tend to just rewrite it as C the concentration and then that's the concentration of either functional group okay so then we get to minus DC DT equals K3 C cubed and we can solve that equation Again, this is the key step. If you don't remember that the concentration of acid equals the concentration of alcohol, 
at t equals zero and at all time during the reaction, you can't set this, set them all equal and plug in. So we can't solve this equation, but we can solve this one. So this is super important. You have to remember to do this or you can't, you can't solve these reactions with a paper and pen. Okay, so this is not so complicated, right? We can separate these variables and integrate, and that is exactly what we're gonna do. Okay, so I've got one over c cubed minus one over c cubed dc equals k3 dt. Why does my rate constant have this subscript of a three? Look at our rate law, two plus one, it's a third order rate law, so that's why it has a subscript of a C, a three, a three. Okay, again, just like I talked about in the last video, we need to integrate these, and often figuring out the limits can be one of the more challenging parts. But at T equals zero, our concentration equals our initial concentration. So we're gonna integrate from T equals zero to some time T, from our initial concentration to some concentration in the future. Again, usually you know C naught and you know, well, you know zero, and then you, you either know, I've polymerized for this amount of time, what's my concentration, or you know the concentration and you wonder, how, you wonder how long it took to get there. So usually you're solving for C or T. Okay. So now we've got our limit and we need to integrate. So the integral of c to the minus three is minus one half c to the minus two. We've got that minus sign and it's going from c naught to c equals our rate constant times time going from zero to t, okay? So I am going to these, all right, here we go, that cancels. I'm gonna multiply both sides by two. Let me simplify this a little bit. So now I have c to the minus two going from c naught to c equals two k rate constant times time, I'm gonna simplify this side, t and then minus zero, okay? And this, we can quickly simplify this, we've got one over c squared minus one over c naught, our initial concentration squared, equals two times the rate constant times time. And that's equation 414. Okay, so now we have concentration as a function of time, and we can do a lot with this equation. On, by convention, people, t uh, polymer scientists like to have, instead of having concentration, they like to have extent of reaction. So we're going to convert from concentration to extent of reaction. This equation is totally valid, totally works. You don't have to do this, but if we want to be um, consistent with um, what the rest of the polymer science community does, we're gonna convert to extent of reaction. Okay, so what is the extent of reaction in this case, right? We've got our number of acid groups reacted, okay? The number of acid groups that have reacted over the total number of acid groups at start, at the start of the reaction, at t equals zero. You could also do this in terms of alcohol groups, either way. So then if we think about what, what is the fraction of unreacted groups? This is the fraction of reacted groups, so the fraction of unreacted groups is one minus P 
right? So what does the concentration equal in terms of P? So our concentration is simply the fraction of unreacted groups times the initial concentration. Okay? And remember, this equation is given to you uh, on the exam. Okay. So, there's our extent of reaction. So now, all we need to do is plug it in this equation, equation 414. Okay, so there's equation 414. There's the equation we just reminded ourselves that we knew. Okay, if we plug this in, no problem. Then we can multiply by um, the initial concentration squared, both sides, bring that, that's a constant. So these, this is an entire collection of constants. So here's equation 416. We've got a collection of constants multiplied by time equals one over one minus P squared minus one. I can just rearrange that into the format of a line, right? One over one minus P squared times a collection of constants. So that's Y, M, our time is our X variable and one is equal to B. So if we plot one over one minus P, we should get a straight line with the slope of the collection of concepts, uh, uh, constants and an intercept of one. And this is redrawn um, from real data from Flory um, from 1930. And you can see it fits very well. Our prediction does very well, except at very, very low times. Any thoughts on why that might be different at very, very low times? We made an assumption. We assumed that, all, that reactivity was independent of chain length. It was a, we didn't have to physically do anything with that assumption, but it's in, the, it's in there, it's buried in there because we have one rate law. We don't have a rate law for different lengths of the chain. And it works really, really well, except for right down here, okay? And if we think, remind ourselves, right? Flory made this assumption that this reaction, that reactivity is independent of chain length. And if we look at this plot, was Flory right? This is the rate constant as a function of chain length. And except for monomers and dimers, it's really, really flat. Reactivity is really independent of chain length. So this is really great, right? This is a great fit. And this is really nice because now we know as a function of time, we can figure out our extent of, um, the extent of reaction. Um, but I also want you to think about what is one over one minus P? Anybody remember? Do you guys remember deriving this equation? Number average degree of polymerization is equal to one over one minus P. Okay, so you now we have, this is really the number average degree of polymerization squared as a function of time. So not only do we know our concentration of our acid or alcohol groups as a function of time, we know the length of the chain as a function of time. Okay. Um, the next video I will um, will be much shorter and we will be covering the kinetics instead of uncatalyzed polyesterifications. They will be catalyzed. So our initial rate law will be different. And I'm looking for that. Okay. So this rate law is only for uncatalyzed polymerizations. The catalyzed rate law is different. And so that's what we'll be doing in the next video. Thank you.